So we know gold has plunged about 25% from its peak in the middle of 2011, and it got crushed in recent days. I say that's a good omen for the economy, the dollar, and even the stock market. I like the sinking gold. Look, there's no end to the world scenario. There's no end to the world dollar. There's no end to the euro. There's no inflation. And energy independence could curb our trade deficit, bolstering king dollar, and bring gold down even more. Remember the fabulous stock market and economic prosperity of the 80s and 90s? Remember, gold was crushed then. Maybe we're moving in that direction right now. Think of it. Anyway, here to debate, Dave Goldman, former head of fixed income research at Bank of America. He's currently president of Macro Strategy. And we welcome back Peter Schiff, CEO of Euro Pacific Capital and the author of The Real Crash, How to Save Yourself and Your Country. And uh, anyway, let me go right to uh, Peter Schiff. Peter, uh, you probably don't agree with my prognostication that falling gold is A, a good thing, and there's more of it. So tell me where you come out. Well, first of all, Larry, thanks for having me back on. It's been a while. And by the way, I read your piece uh, on the fall in the gold price. And while I agree with your sentiments, I completely disagree with your conclusion. When the price of gold did plunge in uh, 1980, that was a good sign because Paul Volcker did the right thing. But Ben Bernanke is no Paul Volcker. I mean, I know Paul Volcker. He may not be a personal friend of mine, but I have met him. And Bernanke is not Paul Volcker. Everything he has done since the 2008 financial crisis has simply made the situation worse. And President Obama is no Ronald Reagan. It's not a repeat of 2008. Maybe it's a repeat of 2000 and, and 1980, rather. It might be a repeat of 1976 or more recently, 2008, when gold did go down by 35 percent. But it was a buying opportunity. And I think this decline will prove to be an even better buying opportunity. All right. Appreciate that. Dave, go when you heard Peter Schiff, how do you react to that? I think that the key issue here is that gold is not an investment, but an insurance policy against the collapse of the dollar. When your cost of insurance goes down, it means you're healthier. The chicken little scenario, Larry, is that we run trillion dollar deficits. We borrow nearly half of that from foreigners. They'll stop lending us money, or at least not at low rates, and we'll crash. Now, that's not going to happen. Because of the energy boom, we're going to have the first trade surplus in a generation by 2020 as things are going. And that means we can finance these deficits as far as the eye can see. Doesn't mean the economy uh, isn't weak. It, we will have the deficits. The good news is our credit's going to be good. The rest of the world will keep lending us money at low interest rates. And that's a net big plus for the stock market. Peter Schiff's an interesting take that David Goldman um, has used, and I've given him a hat tip for it. Energy independence, we don't have to import from the Saudis or you know, other people. We'll probably be exporting too. The trade balance may even go into surplus. That would be good for the dollar, and that in turn would really crush gold. I mean, that's a strong dollar, not the Volcker way, Peter, as you pointed out, but through this energy story. Well, first of all, you know, the dollar traded at a six-week low today versus other fiat currencies, and we still have $500 billion a year trade deficit. So I don't think we're going to resolve that simply with the extra energy production. You know, it feels pretty good right now, right? The Fed is, is spiking the punch ball with all this monetary alcohol. But the problem is when the hangover wears off, we're not going to be able to convince the world to keep lending us money at ultra-low interest rates. Rates are going to go up, and when that happens, the part Party is over because the economy, which is so strung out on cheap money, cannot afford higher interest rates. That's you know, why all this Peter, talk about tightening is a bluff. Peter, for 20 years, people have been saying the Japanese government bond market would crash, but Japan, which has a trade surplus every year, keeps financing its debt with a 10 year now below half a percent. As long as you've got a trade surplus, your credit is good and you can keep financing it. That's what the Japanese case tells us. Doesn't mean we have a boom, but it means we don't have have to insure ourselves against that crashing downside But we downside don't have a scenario. trade surplus. Well, we, I don't understand your I point. Said, we have the exact opposite of a trade surplus. There we are have many a massive of, deficit. That, well, we had a 6% of GDP deficit in 2006. It's now 3% of GDP. And if some of the economists' projections are correct, we go into surplus by 2020. That's what the market thinks. It could go wrong, and I wouldn't sell all my gold at this point. But... The way the market is going, we are likely to have a trade surplus or at least a de minimis deficit, and that means our international credit is going to be terrific, and there's no dollar crash. Peter Schiff, let me just ask you, look, 
There's been an awful lot of pessimism, and, and I've, been, I've been a critic of Ben Bernanke. But it's just interesting to me, and I want, want to get your reaction. The big inflation never came. The total collapse of the dollar never came. In fact, the dollar against broad trade-weighted indexes is about where it was four or five years ago. It's gone up and down, hasn't really moved. This uh, pumping of the money supply, most of the banks didn't use the reserves, and uh, the inflation rate, heck, today, I think the year-on-year -year CPI, 1.3%. In other words, a lot of the doom and gloom, collapse of the dollar, collapse of the euro, soaring American inflation, therefore collapse of the dollar and collapse of the American system. It just seems like, Peter, that kind of pessimism and catastrophic pessimism never really happened, and now gold has completely lost its leg because it traded on that catastrophic pessimism. Pessimism. Well, you know, it hasn't happened yet, but I think it's premature to say that it's not going to happen. If you remember, gold actually performed better before the 2008 financial crisis than it did after the 2008 financial crisis. It's, it's all about the money printing. The money printing is going to continue. The inflation is there. It's there in assets right now. It's in the bond market. It's in the stock market. It's back in the real estate market. The money is being printed. That is the definition of inflation. We are expanding the money supply. I don't care what the government claims with their doctors up CPI numbers, prices are rising. Everybody who shops knows that. But eventually you're going to see much higher increases in consumer prices. The government isn't going to be able to hide that with the CPI, and the Fed is going to be in a box. It's going to have to either raise interest rates or admit that they can't, but one way or another, we're going to have this dollar crisis. It's right. not a question of if, it's a question of when. All right, I hear you. I know that's your point of view, and I respect your point of view. All I'm saying is I've heard this story for several years. I myself have occasionally participated in the inflation story, and frankly, I've been wrong. Well, I was wrong again today with the CPI. Dave Goldman, let me ask you. Yeah, gold, you're not wrong. Dave Goldman, uh, gold, 1350, 1370 today after this big breakdown. Is gold going to $100, I mean uh, $1,000, or is gold going to $2,000? I'll give you that range. Gold going to $1,000 or to $2,000? Which is more likely, Dave Goldman? More likely is $1,000, which is roughly the marginal cost of production. $2,000 if the Federal Reserve slips up or we have a giant Middle East war or 10 other things that could go wrong. You don't sell off your insurance policy, but you don't look at gold as an investment. As for the inflation story, Larry, who do you know who wants to take cash out of the bank and own hard assets, uh, own brick and mortar, factories, commodities? People are still hoarding cash. We're still in a global deleveraging. So the inflation story makes no more sense now than it did in Japan for a long time. I think you're right. I got to tell you, my bias, there's so much risk avoidance by companies, by individuals, uh, by banks. There's so much deleveraging going on that what Bernanke does is being swallowed up by people who are cash hungry. And the gold argument, which might have had merit years ago, doesn't seem to have merit anymore. It's a different ballgame. But, Peter Schiff, I hear you. I understand your point of view. I appreciate you coming on. David Gold. Hey, Larry. Good to see yes, you. Last one. Go ahead. Gold Throw may me. very well go to, it might go to 1,000 and 2,000, but if it goes to 1,000 first, you better buy it because it'll go to 2,000 afterwards and beyond. All right. I hear you. I might buy it at 500. And betting anyway. on the end of the world won't make you money. <laughs> Peter Schiff, David It's Golden. not the end of the world, Thank but it gentlemen. is a, a big drop in the